Hi everyone, this is Greg Hunt. I'm a mediator, a trainer and host of No Disputing That, a podcast for anyone with an interest in dispute resolution. In this series, I sit down with some of the leading names in the dispute resolution field to discuss mediation, arbitration and other forms of alternative dispute resolution, which we also call ADR. We may even cover other issues in the law and in life in general. Expect some laughs, some honesty, and quite a few editing errors along the way. Welcome to part two of the World of Arbitration with myself, Gregory Hunt, and Ben Giretta. Um, This is the second half of our conversation, um, and we cover some embarrassing moments we've had at conferences, and we get to know some of Ben's interests a little bit better, and we also hear some absolutely fantastic advice from Ben for young aspiring arbitrators, mediators, lawyers, whatever profession you're in, actually. The advice applies to all. Um, and actually not even young. Um, as someone in the 50s, I'm going to listen and take the advice as well. Anyway, here's part two. Hope you enjoy it. Um, and there's more details at the end on how to get in touch. Thank you. Right, let's lighten the mood a little bit. Okay. I'm going to ask you, um, I've got a bit of a theme running. Um, uh-huh. and what I'd like to ask you, it's a fun question, and, and I'll answer it too. Um, what's the most embarrassing thing to you happen to you at a conference or in a work setting <laughs> that, that you're not able to share? You know, not, yeah. I don't think I'm... <laughs> to protect the innocent, <laughs> I can't <laughs> share <laughs> anything. Well, I wonder, and this, is, this may come across like a bit of a lawyer's answer, but um, mm. there's probably two ways to approach it in the sense <laughs> that, do you know, I'm constantly doing things at conferences, whatever, which I find embarrassing to myself. Other people mm. may not think they're embarrassing. Uh, I mean, for example, just the other day at a conference, I, I went up to someone, I said, Are you, I, I said, hello, so and so. Mm. And I realised I completely forgot got, got the wrong name. <laughs> I thought she was someone else's time, but they couldn't see a name back. Mm. And, and I, afterwards, I cringed at that. I, I, I thought that yeah. was very, very embarrassing myself, but she, she probably just laughed it off. Mm. Um, on the other hand, there, there are occasions where I do things which I think is I think are perfectly normal, but uh, but <laughs> looking at for the by other people at the outset, I think it's incredibly embarrassing. I, and I will give you an example here. I went to the ICA conference in September. Mm. And um, after there was a big there was a big dinner on the gala dinner on the cheese cheese night, um, and afterwards I tried to get back to my hotel, but a bunch of um, much younger attendees um, dragged me off to first to some some bar and then to another bar which had dancing in it, and I was persuaded to dance, to dance. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> having having drunk a fair bit, and and um, mm. I thought it was perfectly normal, but perfectly fine for me to be dancing, but obviously. I can well imagine that the onlookers seeing this middle-aged guy <laughs> but <laughs> still wearing a suit and doing his dad dancing. <laughs> oh, no. thought it was the most embarrassing thing, thing ever. <laughs> but of course, There's I'm no drunk. video evidence, is there? Sorry? There's no video evidence, is there? Oh, well, <laughs> I sincerely hope not. Um, <laughs> But of course, if I, anyone's it, listening who's got video evidence, yeah. please feel free, you know, feel free to, to send it in. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, yeah, I, but... I think that's uh, yeah. I can imagine that would be embarrassing. And <laughs> if I was if I was in that scenario, my dancing is absolutely shocking. Yeah, you know? yeah. and uh, yeah, would wouldn't go down well. I, yeah. I've, got, I've got so many embarrassing things from my uh... videos. So I'll keep I'll keep my one um, institute themed, um, and it goes back to 1995, and it was my first year. I, I started at the institute in October 95. Um, so it was probably about November time, maybe even, it could have even been December. It might've been a Christmas lunch. Um, and the um, Secretary General at the time, which was um, what they were called, um, was yeah. Kerry Harding. I don't know if you ever came across Kerry Harding. No, I did. Um, Kerry, Kerry was the, the, as you would call now, Director General. It was yeah. the, the Secretary General. Yeah. And uh, he said, Greg, I want you to come to lunch with me and um, an arbitrator I'd like you to meet. Yeah, and you know, it's my it was my first job really. I was twenty five, but you know I'd done odd jobs before, but it was my first sort of what I would call real sort of London job. Yeah, and um, I got taken to this restaurant. It was in Islington. It was up uh, the institute was at um, Angel Gate at the time, 
Okay. And um, we went to this restaurant and sat down and, you know, it was all nicely laid out. And they asked me if I wanted an aperitif. I didn't have a clue what an aperitif was. Yeah. Um, so I looked at Kerry and Kerry ordered a white wine, I think. So yeah. I had the same as Kerry. And then we're sitting there and on the table, there was this lovely bowl of um, chocolate mini eggs. And I yeah. Thought, yeah, I'll have one of them in a minute. I was eyeing them up. Um, and then starters came and we had whatever we had for starters. And I thought, oh, I'll have one of the little mini eggs with it yeah. as well. So I picked it up. It was literally, it was on my lips, just about to go into yeah. my mouth. And Kerry kicked me under the table uh-huh. and put, like, put it down, put it down. So I put it down. And then he picked one up. And then he gently tapped it on the side of his plate and started peeling the quail's egg. Uh, <laughs> so here's me about to put a, a yeah. quail's egg <laughs> with its shell um, in my mouth. To start yeah. eating. Yeah. Luckily, yeah. admitted by, uh, by Kerry's actions yeah. there. Yeah. So that was, that was quite embarrassing at the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got much worse than that, but I, I thought I'd I'm actually sure, I'm sure you have. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll have to listen to other podcasts. Yeah, yeah. listen to my other podcast. I, I, I told one last week, which was, I think, the most mortified I've ever been in my life, uh, which was to do with a, a conference I attended in Lisbon. So you'll yeah, have to listen yeah. out for that one. Yeah. But, so that was, that was terrible. Okay. You know, there's a whole thing here about um, putting yourself out there. I mean, you say to, I say mm. to junior lawyers that. We exist in conferences as a as a community. We exist in 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 events where we get together. We the whole the whole business of arbitration, mediation, whatever. When you're not oh, dealing with clients that's... themselves, is it, is about engaging with other people in the community. And yeah. you will and, and people often junior lawyers just think the idea of going up to someone at a conference is. Mm. mortifying and, and very very embarrassing but you just yeah, gotta yeah. go with it and and you will embarrass yourself by mm. the quail's eggs or whatever yeah. or by the terrible dancing but you're just gonna go with it i mean you're not gonna mm. do something that's going to be that bad <laughs> and most yeah. most of the time most people will, will just ignore it and mm. um even so even though it feels very very embarrassing to you you, you just got to go with it and yeah and be and brave and reach out. exactly Exactly. If, um, if I ever find myself in a situation with a quail's egg again, I'll know what to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Take it on exactly. board. And, and I don't, I don't think I've to... learned about my dancing now. <laughs> no, that's, think... that's probably a mistake that keeps coming back, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I want to move on now. So, you know, away from work. What, what are your yeah. passions away from work? What's a little bit about what sort of makes you tick outside of being an arbitrator? <laughs> Yeah. I do know. I think I probably should have even more. I've got a neighbour of mine who has so many hobbies. And I'm just. <laughs> I look at what I do, and I don't. I don't really do that much. But uh, I mean, I, I am a great film buff, and I can. I can. You know, my my. I've got two daughters. My youngest daughter sent me some quiz which involves um, naming films from just seeing mm. one frame of. Of oh, the film, yeah. and I, I'm pretty. I am pretty good at that. I'm very, mm. good, very good at identifying films, and I do very good at, at, of all eras. Um, and I do enjoy going to watch films of all eras. So I, 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 I can't say I know a huge amount about film theory, but but I do just know about film. I, um, I, I tell you that my my favourite line from a film. Then see if you can guess this film. Okay, but it's got a swear word in, so I'm going to beep. Yeah. Right, you ready? Yeah. Does it sound like I'm ordering a beep pizza? <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's what... Die Hard. Oh, okay. Okay. He's on. He's on the roof shooting down a helicopter or something. Ah. He's on the phone to the police. And does it sound like I'm ordering a Mm-mm, pizza? Uh, uh, BPKA mother, yes. Yeah, yeah, that one. It's that film, yeah. That yeah. Film. So, what, yeah. what's your favourite film then? Oh well, that's a very, very difficult question to answer because yeah. involved, probably there's no one particular film. Well, it depends there, on there the were, mood, doesn't it? Well, exactly. I mean, there, and there are films which uh, mean a lot to you at a particular point of point of time. Yeah. I mean, in terms of recent films, I, I, I really enjoyed Top Gun Maverick. I thought that was a fantastic film. Oh, yeah, I haven't um, seen that yet. But if you look further back in time, further back in my life, mm. I mean, I remember it's a film called um, My Darling Clementine, which is from mm. the 1940s with Henry Fonda, which is a fantastic film about all about mm. 
the gunfight at the OK Corral. Um, uh, there are films that I recall very fondly from um, the 1950s and 96. I, mean, I was around the films made at that time, which I've watched yeah. subsequently. Um, actually, the more I think about it, the more, the more I'm thinking a lot of these are westerns. My dad used to love like, yeah, sounds like westerns. So, The Searchers from the 1950s, for example. Mm. No, that's a great film. And um, Butch Cassidy, the Sunday's Kid from the 60s. These are all, all westerns. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but I do like watching other films too. Mm. Um, uh, so I'm in a huge, huge range of things. So, yeah. Some some films I enjoy so much that actually when I see them on TV, I can't watch them because I know them too well. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I find that a bit stressful. It's like I'm a bit like that with Back to the yeah. Future. I absolutely love Back to the Future. But if it's yeah. on, I don't watch it because I just, I, it stresses me yeah. out a bit. It's, like, it's yeah. weird. It's just yeah. something It's like, yeah. no, I can't watch it because I love it too much. There's a film <laughs> called Atomic Blonde, which is made oh, by yeah. Charlie's Tron. The Ron? Tron. Mm. Um, only from a few years ago. And it's been on TV loads of times. It was on TV the other day. And I was, I was trying to start to turn it on. And I thought, there's no point in me watching this. I've, I've mm. watched it so many times. I know <laughs> so well. I know what's going to come next. So yeah. <laughs> there's really no yeah. point in watching it. Yeah, and there's um, films as well that if they're on, I don't know. My my kids are probably older than yours, and um, they'll be like the Bourne films. I love the Jason uh, Bourne yeah. films, and but I don't want to watch them on my own. I want them to watch them. Yes. With me. Otherwise, there's no point. So it's like they're on all the time, and I think yeah, yeah I'll, I'll I'll take that, and then the kids will watch it with me, and then they never they don't want to watch it with me. So yeah. I end up not watching it. Right, I've got one more question for you. Well, two actually, but one one specifically. Okay. If someone is listening to this who is a young up and coming arbitrator, what's the best advice you can give them? Um, that's. I mean, we could have a whole podcast just about that. Yeah. I think that absolutely the best advice is just to get out there and engage with other people in the industry. Uh, mm -hmm. And when I say get out there, I mean go to things and speak to them face to face. Obviously, um, doing stuff on social media or on sending out things on the internet and blogs or whatever, they, they, have, a, they have value to them. It's the sort of thing I do all the time. So I wouldn't do it if I didn't think there was value. But the real, the real value comes from getting out there and engaging yeah. with people um, yeah. and, and take a chance as well actually not only in terms of engaging with people but also generally if an opportunity comes up take a chance and see what it leads you needs you yeah you never know where the opportunities will take you and I've I've always lived by that I say well I'll give it a go and, and see what happens mm. yeah I know I that's a so very important. yeah it's a very general piece of advice, and I could no, be more good, specific. But... Good, no, it's a good piece of advice, and I think as someone who, um, I, I think there's a, a, a period since I've set up my own business where I've not mm. been networking enough, yeah. um, and I've not been going to those places enough and seeing people enough, and I think yeah. having, having not done that maybe over the last six or seven years as much as I should have been doing, um, and I would definitely recommend the same to anyone. You know, if you are, if you're trying to sort of make a name for yourself in a particular industry, it doesn't have to be arbitration. It could be mediation, adjudication, or the law, or or anything. Um, let people know you exist. You know, because yeah. if they don't know, and I always say to newly qualified, when, when someone finishes my uh, mediator training course, and I say, well, what do I do now? So, well, make sure you let people know that you're a mediator. Yeah. How are you ever going to get an appointment as a mediator if your LinkedIn profile doesn't say that you're a mediator? Yeah. You know, so it's about getting out there, like you say, letting people know you exist, letting people know what you do, getting on with people and speaking to them. Yeah, and, and uh, speaking like, to you, them. You never know what's around the corner. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Tell me, what, I mean, obviously, you still need to earn a living and you still need to do some work and whatever. Mm. So, not do it all say do it all the time but yeah. you, you should do it more than you probably are thinking on doing tell me a story yeah. i told this story when i was early at, uh, a junior person at ashes i've told there was a the senior partner way back when i mean talking about the 1950s 1960s here the senior partner of, of ashes most crisp in those days 
his mode of operation was he would turn up for work in the morning, he'd spend a few hours working, whatever it was. Then he would get into his car, his chauffeur-driven Bentley in those days, drive mm. around to some client's office, have a big lunch with the client, which mm. would involve lots of alcohol, <laughs> and go on all afternoon, and then he'd go home. And that was his working yeah. pattern. And, and yeah. so on the face of it, by modern standards, he did virtually no work. But actually, mm. he was the most well-connected and most, almost the most successful lawyer in the city because he knew everyone. He also mm. didn't just know them, but he uh, to, to say hello to, but he actually engaged with them in, in a big way. And, and they knew mm. him as well. Mm. That, that, that level of engagement you need. I, I also remember there's one of these marketing uh, piece of advice or marketing books, I can't remember where I've read it, but saying that um, in order for there to be any any real engagement or any real purchasing of someone's services, um, you need that the, the service provider needs to have at least, I think it's eight touch points with that with the person buying. Uh, mm. oh, and when I mean touch points, I mean the sense of meeting them at conferences, meeting them at emailing them, meeting, them, having lunch with them, that sort of thing. I, I, and the point of that is that no one ever buys anything off you on the, on the when they meet you for the first time. Mm. Uh, I mean, it's not it's not enough simply to say to say, well, I met so and so at a, at a conference, therefore they're going to appoint me as an arbitrator or a mediator, or they're going to give me some work or whatever. It does it doesn't work like that. You've got to meet them again, again, again. <laughs> And it's only yeah. after eight of those engagements, and it, it may not be eight, it may be, I may be misremembering, it's something like that, seven, nine or ten, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Uh, it's only after multiple engagements that they will get to the point where they actually know who you are and, and trust you and will give you something. So yeah. it's, 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 it's not just about engaging, but it's about re-engaging and re-engaging again. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's great advice to give. Okay, I've got one one question, and, and it's 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 a risky one for me because I'm going to ask you now: Is there anything that you wish I'd asked you that I hadn't, <laughs> or that you want, or that you want to ask me? Well, <laughs> I mean, we could we could again go on for a long time just just on the other questions. I yeah. I think. Um, uh, I mean, it'd be, and it'd be great to hear from you. Let me tell you. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer that with a question. I'm gonna answer it by way of another piece of advice. Mm. But it, but it, what you just said has reminded me of this piece of advice, which is, when you go to a conference, you meet someone at a conference, you should aim to speak less about yourself and more about the other person. Yeah. By which I mean, there's a natural tendency when you meet someone at a conference to tell them all about yourself say oh, i'm i'm an arbitrator i do this and that i i whatever i mean the rat most of the time the person you're speaking to will just completely forget about it afterwards and there won't really be real engagement whereas if you go to a conference you meet someone and you ask them about themselves they're much more likely to engage with you much more likely to remember you if, if you've got them talking about yourself so obviously you don't don't you're not there to be an investigative reporter or anything you're not there to question every person you meet you have to have a proper conversation but i always find when i meet people at conferences i have to meet people who have seen my profile online or whatever and they, then they want to come and talk to me about that linkedin mm. or whatever my my response is usually well thank you very much for that but tell me about yourself <laughs> yeah i've met so many interesting people at conferences at events at arbitration um, things across the world that I would I find it far more value to speak to them and find out about them than speaking about yeah. myself. It doesn't yeah. answer your question yeah. at all, but <laughs> just yet another no, piece of advice. But, but I say that because you you said what what should I ask ask about you? I mean, we I'd be I'd be really happy to spend another hour just asking you about you and about your um, experiences and your. Um, hopes and aspirations that sort of thing because that to me is actually more more interesting than talking about myself uh, so it's very very important. very nice point but that's not gonna happen 
<laughs> <laughs> no, no. And I'll tell you what, it might happen one day. Um, but obviously the, the idea of this podcast is we get to know you better. Yeah. Um, when I so, set up my own podcast, I'll have you as guests on my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it would be good. I, I, I think what you were just saying though before that is really important, taking an interest in other people. Yeah, um, and, and not making it just look like you're going through some sort of like tick box exercise of, of absolutely. And I was I was out with my um, eldest son a few months ago, and he was buying a kebab um, mm. at Billericay train station. There was a, a, a kebab shop. Yeah, um, and, you know, like a, a van. And I heard him say something, and I thought it was such a good way to put it. He, he said to the man who was selling him the kebab, um, and it was like two in the morning, and he'd had a drink and all the rest of it, and he mm. said. Um, so what's your journey? Yeah. And he was and he, he just he was taking an interest. He wanted to know what the man who was selling the kebab did. Like not just, you know, selling yeah. kebabs at three o'clock in the morning, but what's his journey? How's he ended yeah. up here? What's he done in his life? And I sat there and I, I stood there and I was just listening to him for about 10 minutes talking to this man. And I thought, yeah, yeah. You know, at the time he was about 21 and i thought god that's so good the way you've just yeah, yeah. asked that one question and this fella's opened up to you and yeah, now you yeah, know yeah. Basically the whole life story yeah. and um it was a good way of getting information out of people i think absolutely and it's very admirable of your son to, to be that engaged with with people especially at two in the morning <laughs> Uh, but yes. uh, uh, to, but to have a level of engagement and to have a real interest in other people i mean you do see yeah. so many people not only within arbitration mediation, but all walks of life, who mm. are very self-centered, not, ne not necessarily selfish, because that, that, that all, has all sorts of connotations with it, but not really having a proper awareness to engage with, with other people, being so bound up in their own um, concerns, their own um, lives, they don't really engage, or don't really mm. have enough interest in other people. And that's so it's so important, it, both in arbitration, mediation, and in other walks of life. Absolutely. Well, Ben, I've failed again. I said to you <laughs> I was going to try and keep it to twenty minutes, and uh, I think uh, we've gone on for considerably longer than that. And yeah. so I'm going to have to wrap up. Um, thank you so much. I found that really interesting. Um, can Welcome. you? Welcome. I've enjoyed give... it as well. Good. Good. Thank you. Um, I hope you do when you hear it back. Um, can you give anyone who's good enough to listen um, an easy way to contact you if they wanted to get in touch? Uh, well, there are many ways to contact me. I mean, my, my firm, Fox Williams, has all my details on our website. Um, yeah. my, my email address is bjoretta at foxwilliams.com. Um, but I'm also always on social media, LinkedIn in particular, so people can yeah. always find me on that and send me messages on that brilliant and likewise if anyone wants to get in touch with ben you can uh, contact me um and i'll uh, let ben know and we can do that as well so thank you very much ben for being my guest today um, you're welcome and i look forward to meeting you again in person yeah um, and maybe we'll have a we'll have a drink and uh, to everybody listening i'll see you next time on no dispute in that Thank you for listening to No Dispute In That. Please subscribe to hear more from experts in the field. If you'd like to suggest any future areas for discussion or to appear on the show yourself, you can follow us on Twitter at at No Disputing That and send us a DM. Finally, if you need a mediator, give my management team at Arbiter International a call on 020 7936 7070 or email info at arbitra.com. .co.uk. See you next time on No Disputing That.